Well, hello. Welcome back. Uh, we're into our sort of next section in which we talk about buffer solutions and, uh, and solution equilibria. And so these topics are also, just like acid-base equilibria, any of the equilibrium type ideas or solution chemistry is a big deal on the AP exam. Very, very important topics. Um, and one of the reasons just simply is because they're hard. And so they want to know if you know how to do the hard stuff. Um, and, well, I don't know. I mean, if they're really hard, but there's just a lot of things kind of going on here you have to keep track of in your mind. And every situation's a, a little bit different. So that's so why there's so many videos on acid base equilibria. And there'll probably be a lot of them on these as well. So, um, so anyways, uh, let's look at this right here. Um, this is a weak acid, right? Or a, um, this is going to end up being a weak base, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is uh, sodium acetate. So acetate, what's going to happen? Um, it's going to, oh, I guess I got that already all set up for us. It's going to dissociate into uh, sodium ions, which are neutral, and acetate ions, which is uh, a weak base because this is going to be able to, to pull um, hydrogens to itself. Um, and, so, um, and so this ion right here, if it was, say, added to a weak acid with the same conjugate, um, same conjugate or the same ion as its conjugate, then, um, then what you do is you create a buffer situation. And this is also called the common ion effect. So, um, so what acid would it? What acid would it be? So if we look at this uh, sodium acetate, well, it would be acetic acid. And so acetic acid we know is H, uh, C2H3O2. Right, and so if we are to take this and add it to this solution right here, um, this uh, acetic acid solution, when it goes into water, is going to become um, the acetate ion. Oops, sorry, the acetate ion C2H3O2, and it is going to become hydronium ions. Right, um, and so. <clears throat> so what's going to happen if I add this into here? Well, what's going to happen is that's going to increase the amount of acetate ions, which is going to drive the reaction to the left. It's going to create more, um, create more of the acid. This is called the, the common ion effect. So if I have like uh, any sort of weak acid, for example, if I throw in the common ion and acetate being a common ion between these two, if I throw it in, it's going to drive the equilibrium back toward the acid. And what this actually creates is it creates what's called a buffer. And a buffer solution is something that resists change in pH upon um, addition of small amounts of, of acid or base. So uh, basically the way it works is that a buffer is essentially, um, and so then this creates a buffer. So a buffer is developed using the common ion effect. Um, and so a buffer resists pH change. So we could write that, uh, resist pH change. And how does it do that? Well, let's see. If I was to add some kind of acid in here, well, it could combine with this. Uh, this could take those hydrogens from it, and, um, and then it would neutralize it, right? So um, it would, uh, would not have to make more of the hydronium ion. If I was to add um, acid, um, if I was to add a, a base in there, for example, then this acid right here would, um, would be able to release this hydrogen then and then um, combine with the hydroxide and just produce water. So, so it wouldn't matter if you added a little bit of acid or a little bit of base. Um, what's going to happen is it, it would be able to sort of stabilize it because you have kind of this excess of uh, this weak acid floating around in here ready to donate these hydrogens to any hydroxides that might enter the picture. And you have these, um, these ions right here, the acetate ions, which are floating around kind of as a weak base. And so what you need for a buffer is simply a weak acid and its conjugate base. And the, the best way to make a buffer is to figure out what your weak acid is um, and then just throw in some of its 
um, if it's conjugate base in there as, a, as an ion um, using what's called the common ion effect. All right, so let's do a, a little bit more of, of these kind of calculations or just look at some situations because um, this is the idea of a weak acid and then throwing in its conjugate base uh, to create a buffer. So there's a buffer right there. So now you sort of have an idea of what a buffer is. Um, let's take away these real quick and let's just look at these one at a time. So um, it's real important just to be able to analyze these things and figure out what is going on. Um, and so what is going on right here? Hang on, I need to do this. Um, what is going on right here? Well, we have nitric acid. What's nitric acid? Well, that's a strong acid. So we know, we know something about this. We know this is a strong acid. And then we have sodium hydroxide. So we know that's also a strong base. Okay, so these are going to completely dissociate. So what is that going to mean? Well, um, every single hydrogen is going to come off and every single hydroxide. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to make uh, one water molecule per one of each of those. And these two are going to be um, aqueous. Of course, they're going to stay dissociated. So they're really not going to do anything. They're uh, spectator ions in this. And so um, we need to come down here and um, go ahead and write out our our um, net ionic equation, and here it is. Okay, so strong acid and strong base together um, yields a neutral, a neutral situation. We have uh, two neutral salts, and we have water. So the pH of this, as long as everything is equal molarities, is going to be 7. Um, so let's look at another situation. What if we had a um, strong acid? So here we're looking at um, strong acid, HCl, and we're going to combine that with NaC2H3. What is that? Well, um, when this dissociates, we know that it's going to create these ions in solution, and these ions in solution are a base. They're a weak base. So we've got a strong acid with a weak base because uh, this will want to pick up a hydrogen and uh, become uh, acetic acid, and then the, the sodium will do nothing. So um, so if I put a strong acid with a weak base, what does it do? Well, my sodium and chlorine are going to, you know, essentially just for writing out the equation, these remain aqueous, so essentially they do nothing. So they're, these are spectators in this whole situation. Um, and then my hydrogen then is going to match up with my acetate ion and make acetic acid. So here's my net, my net ionic reaction. Get rid of all the stuff that did nothing. So get rid of the sodium and the chlorine. And we have our hydrogen atoms with our acetate ion making our acetic acid. So the, this, the, the rule is that a strong acid with a weak base will create a weak acid. So let's look at another situation here. Um, uh, the other situation that we, we really have to analyze is the idea of um, a strong base with a weak acid. So, so here we had a strong acid with a weak base. Here we have a strong, a a strong base with a weak acid. Um, let's use a different color here so it's easy to separate out what I'm doing. So we have sodium hydroxide combining with acetic acid, right? So what's that going to do? Well, the sodium is going to match up with the acetate and then this hydrogen here is going to match up with this uh, so obviously these two h and two h's and an o we're going to get water so we've got water and then my sodium then is going to combine with my acetate and we know that what's going to happen is that sodium actually never really does combine with it it actually stays um, aqueous in solution right so what does this create well it creates that acetate ion and there's that acetate ion we know what that acetate ion does it um, it uh, it creates a, uh, a weak base situation um, and so if you have a strong base with a uh, weak acid you're going to create a weak base all right um, so let's look at one more example real quick so that we can kind of well, I guess um, there is one more category on here because we did strong acid, strong base, uh, strong acid, weak base, strong base, weak acid. What if you put a strong, um, or what if you put a weak acid and a weak base together? Well, yeah, they're really not going to do much of anything, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Uh, so here we have the idea of nitric acid with ammonia. 
Well, what's that gonna produce? What's it gonna do? Um, so we put nitric acid, HNO3, with ammonia. We've got a strong acid with a weak base. And so we just talked about what's gonna happen with a strong acid and a weak base. Um, so it's going to make um, some sort of a, a, weak, a weak acid, right? Um, and so how's it gonna do that? Um, well, here, here's, here's what's going to happen. So the, um, the strong acid is going to combine, um, is going to release these hydrogen ions, and the hydrogen ion is going to combine with the weak base, right, to make NH4. So this is ammonium. Ammonium carrying a positive one charge is going to combine with our NO3. But in reality, our NO3 is a spectator in this whole situation, our nitrate. It doesn't really do anything. So our ionic equation is going to look like this. We've got our hydrogen ion from this. We've got our ammonia from this. And um, we've got our new um, newly formed NH4 positive um, aqueous right there. Um, and so then this particular one can is a weak acid because we know that it'll actually, of course, go back the other way and get rid of, I guess I could uh, do this, it'll actually go back the other way and get rid of that hydrogen and add it to water, uh, creating a weak acid situation. So, so here's uh, just one last kind of final example um, showing uh, nitric acid and ammonia um, looking at its uh, net ionic equation right here. So understanding how to write these net ionic equations, really, really important, and be able to separate these out and kind of know what's going to happen when I put together different types of acids.